So when our friends out east invite us to go camping with them, we found out that the DEC sites on the eastern side of New York State, they don't have power. We are slaves to our air conditioner and our power and our coffee pot and, 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 and. So when we were camping this past weekend and we found a deal on a champion inverter generator on Amazon, we could not pass it up. And this baby is awesome. We're gonna open this up right now and I'm gonna show you everything about it. We were actually shopping for an extension cord because where we were camping, our cord didn't reach and we've never had one before. So we were there on Amazon. I happened to come across this. It was 53% off. So it, I wanna say it was 540 something and some change. So this is a pretty beefy inverter generator that we got for a little over 500 bucks. I want them back on Amazon today, two days after we made this purchase, they are out of these. So I don't know if they were clearing them out or whatnot, but we got a great deal that we couldn't pass up. Our friends tell us that the Predator is the way to go. Uh, they sell those at Harbor Freight. They are really good. We've used theirs. We've used our other friend's coming, Cummins, I guess, Cummins, uh, the diesel people. He had a little bit of smaller one. They were all really quiet and we liked them a lot. So we are not playing favorites. We have a champion snowblower, so why not? It works well for us. The inverter generator's gotta work just as well. Couple extra things before I really break this out. The generator does have a warranty for three years. So the generator's got two 20 amp plugs, 110 outlets. It's got the 30 amp RV plug. It also has a cigarette lighter adapter and it comes with a splitter. First of all, it has two USB ports on it. You can plug that in. The box also gives you the oil that you need. The only thing that you have to supply is the gas. So let's open this box, take it out, fill it up, and let's see how quiet this baby runs. And before I forget, you can also run these in parallel. So you can hook two of these up together, connect them, and then you have 9,000 peak watts and 7,000 running watts. So you can power a lot of stuff. We basically want to keep our battery charged, run the air conditioner. Coffee is a huge must. And I should go back and say, never cut towards yourself like I just did. Uh, always cut away from yourself. Our son says, cut towards your buddy, not your body. I love that saying. So, safety first. This gives you your owner's manual. We got some tools. It comes with a wrench and it has almost like a, a socket. Kind of like what you see with a chainsaw, if anyone's familiar. And there's this little bar that goes to the end probably to twist it on there. So it's probably gonna be a, a, a nut that's way down deep that we need this to reach. So keep those handy. Wow, get rid of the styrofoam. And then we have got a funnel. We have got oh, our oil, which is zip tied on here. So always keep these close. First, we have our oil, and it told me on the box it takes 16.9 fluid ounces. This is a half a liter. Really? You should really keep your measurements the same if you're going to tell me that I need 16.9 fluid ounces. Don't give me liters. We'll come back to that. I have, ooh, a notice. Remove nuts before adding oil or gasoline. I don't know, it's a little blue tag on the top. It says to remove the nuts. They're showing them coming out of the bottom, so hopefully that'll make sense. According to the box, this weighs 108 pounds, so I'm gonna stand up. Always lift with your knees, never your back. Follow me. Here it goes. That is not 108 pounds. Are you kidding me? This might weigh 30 to 40. It's heavy, but it's manageable. Leave this back here as a prop. Notice, no oil in unit, we notice. Add oil before starting for the first time. Check level as shown. Doesn't show you. Remove shipping nuts. Okay, that's helpful. <laughs> so it shows it. Ooh, there's a handle. This is what happens when you don't read the directions first. <laughs> so 
So, come on, I said, you can like drag this around. I mean, it has wheels, so I figured you could, but I thought that's what this handle was for. I didn't know there was cool handles on the side. Neat. Okay, so shipping nuts. Don't mind my dirty lawnmower. Ah, wait, what? What are the nuts? What are the shipping? It also shows somebody reading the instruction book. So why don't we start there? Read owner's manual to reduce risk of injury, clearance, ground. Ah, folding handle, first thing you see in here. Hmm. There's a wrench, there's a spark plug wrench. That's what that long thing is with the handle, spark plug wrench. Hmm. Your generator requires some assembly. It must be properly serviced with fuel and oil before operations. If you have any questions, blah, 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 blah. Set the shipping carton on a solid flat surface. Remove everything, yep, unpacking, we already got that. Remove shipping support hardware. Before filling the engine with oil or gasoline, tip the generator onto, a, onto the muffler side, which is straight up, how it shows in the photo I've got here. Well, apparently that is the muffler side. Tip onto the flattened cardboard box or the generator came in or other protective surface so it's not just in scratch the enclosure. Whoops. Thanks. <laughs> Mention that first in the instructions. Not that. I have shipping stuff that it came with, styrofoam. That was pretty easy on this one, I took the back. However, that's not a bad idea. Remove the four nuts and mounting plates from the bottom of the generator using the included eight slash 10 millimeter wrench. Nuts and spacers can be discarded. Tip the generator back upright. Eight and 10 millimeter wrench. This is the spark plug socket. This is a little thingy that goes around the spark plug for turning. And as I mentioned before, it also comes with the cigarette lighter adapter, two port thingy mabouter. The shipping nuts and mounting plates are in orange. The instructions are in black and white, but on the, the things that are telling me to remove them, they're showing you in orange arrows and orange, I don't know, these look like tubes on here, but they're orange. So. The pictures all point to these. They're 10 millimeters. I wouldn't say that a wrench is the proper tool for this. I would probably use like a socket, but it works. I mean, you can get it in there. Hmm. We got, we're left with nubby sticking out, whatever. So you can get it in. You kind of have to go into an angle, but then it's they're hand tight. So it's it's easy. It's just awkward, I guess you'd say. I don't really understand what they're for, but that's got to be something. This is... And when you get them all off, there's four of them. The instructions say they can be discarded. Next step is adding engine oil. Yes, do not attempt to crank or start the engine before it's been properly filled with a type of an amount of oil. Of course. Place the generator on a flat surface. Turn the oil access cover fastener to the unlocked position and remove the cover. Hang on a moment. And we're back. Turn the oil access cover fastener to the unlocked position and remove the cover. This is the oil access cover. Here's the cover. You unlock and you remove. It's just got some black padding in the back and it's hard to see probably from where you are. So let's bring this in. You gotta swoop deep. And that is where, there it is. That's where you fill it up with oil. And that is why it comes with a funnel. So 0.5 liter ounces, 16.9 fluid ounces. What do you know? Half a liter of oil is exactly what this takes. So we're gonna take the included funnel, stick that in there, pour the entire amount of this in there. And it's also, oh, the cap I think is also a dipstick. It is. Where'd my phone go? Ooh. That's an awkward angle.
I should have known. Ah. When using the dipstick to check oil level, do not screw the dipstick in while checking. Okay. Uh, a visual check should show the oil about one to two threads from running out of the fill hole. So you can see it in here and it is correct. I can see that. I can't count the threads. It looks roughly two threads. So we're gonna take that, kind of stick it in. And yep, we're about halfway up the, the dipstick. So we're calling it good. Now, add fuel. That's the next step. Tuck that back in, whatever that is. Put the thingy back on. Lock her back up. Time to add some gas. The gas cap is right on top. We're gonna unscrew that. Has a little chain to keep it tethered so it doesn't blow away in a strong wind, maybe. I'm not gonna add a lot of gasoline because I don't know if we're gonna need this the rest of the year or not. But having something in here just to test it, we'll probably run it every once in a while. This does have a gas gauge as well, right above. I've never seen that before, but that's kind of neat. According to our gas gauge, we're about half full. Also, important safety tip. Do not, do not run a generator in your house or your garage. You can get some serious exhaust fumes going inside and they can kill you. So please don't. I'm going to do this momentarily so we can hear how loud it is. And then I'm gonna be taking it outside. I'm just gonna be doing this in the garage for the first time for demonstration purposes. It's not gonna be in here for a very long time at all. So I wanna get that out of the way before I, anyone tells me that I shouldn't be running in the garage. I definitely know and nobody should be doing this. Please, please, please don't do this. Okay. So, operation. This is the kind of neat thing from what they say. It's got the easy start dial. So where this little yellow arrow is, it's up to off. There's green to run, and here's this little thing for start. So you just turn the dial to start, and then you pull the cord. And when it's going, you move it back to run. I don't know why they call that easy start, Move the easy start dial to the choke position. That's what I meant to say. Pull the recoil cord slowly until resistance is felt and then pull rapidly. As the engine warms up, turn the easy start dial to the gasoline run position. Okay. So here we go. We're on choke. Did that already. We're going to go slow. Oh, oh. I have found resistance. Now rapid. Wow. Set switch, the 20 amp, and the, the 12 volt resets. Uh, we have 
the hooking them up in tandem connections here, and that's it. I mean, it's it's simple and straightforward, and it's quiet. I hope we can convey the fact that it is. I'm, like I said, I'm, we're recording right next to it. gas gauge. So over here we got empty and as you fill it up this is full on the other side. Um, it's just kind of neat. You can kind of get a gauge as to where it is. The one we were borrowing at Moffitt Beach didn't have one so the generator just quit at one point. We're like, oh, guess we need to add gas. Uh, this is just kind of a neat little thing that you just look down and be like, okay, I got half full. I'll be good for the next couple hours. So I gotta say I'm impressed. I mean, for 500 bucks, we can now join our friends out east. Hi, hi Jim's, Cameron, Michelle, Dave's, everybody out that way. Roberta, I cannot forget you. Um, we are gonna be camping with you and we are going to be doing it in as much style as we can out there because, <laughs> as you said, you're gonna turn me into a redneck yet. We are looking forward to it. I cannot tell you how cool this is to get this so cheap. If you find a sale on this, I do recommend it. We're probably going to do another one once we've hooked it up to the camper so we can see how good it actually is. But hey, this is pretty awesome. And I got to tell you guys, as we always do, happy camping. Just a little behind the scenes here. We're trying to block the sun from Kevin's face. So we've got these very tall, large cardboard box that our tree came in trying to keep Kevin so you can actually see him and he doesn't look like a lobster. Actually, it's in the horrible spot.